Mark Jindrak and Randy Orton debut as a babyface tag team on July 7th edition of Raw in 2003. They were both booted from Evolution for being delinquent frat boys who made juvenile jokes. Triple H hates Jindrak for disrespecting him, Stephanie McMahon hates them both for being troublemakers, especially Randy for being honorably discharged from the military, and Ric Flair sees greatness in them, but they need some time. At SummerSlam, Stephanie takes matters into her own hands by firing the rookies after Triple H and Flair cheated to win, but then they come right back to get revenge on the veterans at Unforgiven. Turns out it was Flair who brought the rookies back, so General Manager Eric Bischoff places a bounty on his head, which a returning Batista collects in October. The feud comes to a head at Survivor Series, where the rookies face Triple H, Batista, and Flair in a handicap match, which Evolution wins with the numbers advantage. To the delight of Stephanie, Flair then walks out on them and stands up to Bischoff. Both know Mark Jindrak was in the WCW power plant, and the way he and are being treated right now is unfair. If he really is loyal to Stephanie and her agenda against them, Bischoff must step in the ring with Flair to prove it. At Armageddon, Bischoff does exactly that as he joins Triple H and Batista against Randy Jindrak and Flair, who get a much-deserved win. The momentum motivates the rookies to make a good dent in the competition during the Rumble match, but both are eliminated by Triple H and Batista. Batista then eliminates Triple H, who's like, screw it, I'll just face them all in the Fatal 4-Way at WrestleMania 20. Jindrak feels the deck is stacked against him. But Randy assures him everything will be okay, especially between them both. The reflection of perfection makes history by jumping over Batista onto a down flare in the middle of the ring for the pin, coining him the moniker of Jumpin' Mark Jindrak. Orton's pissed, claiming Jindrak stole his mania moment, but Flair manages to calm him down, saying they all made history that night. He then manages them on their way to being number one contenders for the Deadliest Tag Team Championship belts, only to get decimated at Survivor Series. The rookies compete together again in the next Rumble match, and after that, the Dudleys attack the Orton family in their home, causing Randy to go Super Saiyan. The two teams will face off in a TLC match at Mania Goes Hollywood. Jumpin' Jindrak cheats death by jumping out the tallest ladder onto the Dudleys through a stack of tables, as Orton unhooked the belts as his entire family watched from the front row. This catches the attention of the Brothers of Destruction. Taker is after Jindrak for cheating death, and Kane is after Orton because of all people, the one who survived that tragic funeral home fire could teach the hot at a lesson in anger management. At SummerSlam, the brothers walk out the new tag team champions, and Orton snaps on Jindrak and Flair. Him punting Flair coins him the moniker of the Legend Killer, and he accuses both Randy and Flair for taking up too much time in his spotlight. Unforgiven 2005 will see the Legend Killer square off against the whole nine yards, but put him on the shelf by getting his knees up after Jindrak attempted to splash him from the top rope. At New Year's Revolution 2006 in Albany, New York, Orton sees Jindrak at the front row. The Legend Killer knows the Italian Eagle isn't 100%, but he beats on him anyway. The latter returns in the 2006 Rumble match, but is quickly eliminated by Randy. Their long-awaited rematch will take place in Mania Big Time, and Jindrak will come out on top. Now he's on a mission to get some singles gold around his waist, but the United States Champion JBL will humiliate him in a Kentucky Derby match by playing horseshoes on him for the countout win. Good thing he wore a helmet. The Cowboy will feel a Jindrak's wrath at Judgment Day, and the whole nine yards will win the title in the process. Meanwhile, Randy grieves the loss of his grandfather before challenging US Champion Jindrak to a TLC match at SummerSlam. Jindrak may have flew too close to his son when he attempted to jump off the top rope onto Orton on the ladder set across the apron and barrier, but Randy dodged out of the way, so Jindrak crashes and burns while Randy makes Bob Orton Sr. proud. Thankfully, the injuries weren't too bad. He'll wrestle long enough to team up with Batista, Rey Mysterio, MVP, and Fifth Finley at Survivor Series. In real life, Batista loves Mexico, so he's good friends with him and Rey Mysterio, who admires Jindrak for taking such a risk at SummerSlam. MVP and Finley are like family to Batista, so the animal's house is the Italian Eagles. Whoever is the sole survivor becomes the US Champion. Jindrak notices MVP will do anything to keep the title on him, and Randy will die a happy man if he gets it back. On SmackDown, the three face off in a triple threat match for the title, and before the 2007 Royal Rumble pay-per-view, Jindrak and Orton face off again to determine a number one contender for the title, which is Orton. MVP will retain the title, but he and the Legend Killer will compete in the Rumble match. Orton will run into Jindrak yet again, but the two are eliminated simultaneously. At No Way Out the same year, the two meet once more to qualify for a spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 23. The match ends in a double countout, so they both get a spot. Orton's stress and anger will cost him as Jindrak climbs the ladder to unhook the briefcase and become Mr. Money in the Bank. King Booker cries treason at Jindrak's fluke win, even though he won it fair and square. Jindrak makes fun of the King's complainer by acting in comedic segments such as him jumping around a tree and picking money out of it before saying, I guess money does grow on trees, your highness. 
Mr. Money in the Bank cashes in his briefcase at SummerSlam 2007 during Batista vs. not Greg Colley, but vs. King Booker. The reflection of perfection pins title holder Batista to become the new World Heavyweight Champion, only to be greeted by a post-match assault from the King. This leads to one final match between the two for the belt, and Jim Jack comes out on top, of course. Now that the King's out of the way, then there was the animal. He claims he never respected Jindrak, especially after he jumped over into pin Ric Flair many at 20. At Cyber Sunday 2007, Batista will win the belt in the Falls Count Anywhere match by stuffing Jindrak in a body bag and pinning him onto a bridge before throwing him into the Potomac River. The Italian Eagle barely survives. He sees red as he locks horns with Batista one more time in a no-holds-barred match at a Survivor Series. But Batista stands tall when the dust settles. Jindrak's anger got the better of him. He's then wanted for cheating death again. In the 2008 Royal Rumble pay-per-view, Jindrak challenges Batista again to a title match in his home state because he wants to show that he's good enough to be the World Heavyweight Champion in a Hell in a Cell to avoid shenanigans. Jindrak brings home the gold, but Undertaker wins a 2008 Royal Rumble match. Therefore, the main event of WrestleMania 24 will see Jumpin' Jindrak skydive into the Citrus Bowl to not only defend his title belt, but challenge the streak as well. Unfortunately, Jindrak survived nearly dying many times, but couldn't survive death. He then has to survive a former member of the Ministry of Darkness and a dead man's longtime friend, JBL, again, by throwing him off the balcony of the ladder of a fire truck in a San Diego street fight before facing the Phenom again for the title at SummerSlam, but he still couldn't do it. Meanwhile, Kane wins a five-man battle royal on SmackDown. Jindrak and the Big Red Machine meet again. Edge has been a real thorn in the Italian legal side, taunting him about how he couldn't beat his old master when it mattered most. At Cyber Sunday 2008, Jindrak Kane forms to take out JBL and Edge en route for Survivor Series, where Jindrak gets buried alive in his third attempt at getting the gold. And by the way, are we getting 2008? Saw Randy Orton, who's taken WWE hostage by kidnapping Stephanie and punting Triple H and Vince, punt the Phenom and pin him to get the belt. Jumpin' Jindrak returns in a 2009 Royal Rumble match and wins! He's out to save WWE! The scariest part of this is that Randy did what he did to Stephanie out of revenge for what he and Jindrak went through when they were rookies in 2003. So the champion and challenger's path is coming full circle. At this point, the only way Jindrak can beat him is if he kills him. So at WrestleMania 25, the two will square off in an I Quit match for the belt. Eventually, after about 20 minutes of agony and torment, the whole nine yards makes Randy say I quit, and finally becomes the new World Heavyweight Champion, saving WWE from oblivion! And that is how Mark Jindrak would go down as one of the top guys in WWE if I had the pen.